Hey, uh, welcome to Tangent. Uh, Shut up, Max. It's merch time. You guys feel it in the air? You guys feel that? It's electric. I was talking. And it's the electricity of merchandise. I was supposed to do the intro for this episode. That's fine, Max, but it's not needed anymore because the intro is merch now. <laughs> That's right. We literally just agreed that I was supposed to do the intro for I'm this. seeing posters. I'm seeing t-shirts. Bracelets. Like it's 2005. Bracelets. Wait, wait. Foam, foam fingers? Yes, now you're on board. Oh, shoot. Now you're on board. Isaac? Huh? What if you were merch? Come on, foam fingers. This is a terrible idea. No, this is the best idea we've ever had. I want us to sell ourselves to people. <laughs> I want to is... commoditize my body. This is going to just <laughs> turn into us three being the only ones with our own merch sitting around this table. No, no. I, people see me and they want to buy me. Is that, is that right? The, Do you have the, any stories about the that? Market of me, the market of me is, is open and the people are lining up like it's Black Friday for a piece. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> like, you guys may not be trying very hard to sell out, but I'm trying very hard to sell out right now. I sold out from day one. I looked at the doctor and was like, here, just tattoo the name of whatever drug you're using right now and put it right on me. So I actually have a, a Benadryl. <laughs> I don't know, you know that, tattooed on my shoulder. That really makes sense because you know those spam texts you get that say like for 500 bucks you can wrap your car? With yeah. That, that, that's why I get why there's like six different wrappings on your car at a time. That makes yeah, total sense. All those yeah. bumper stickers are um, corporate sponsored. <laughs> Man. Yeah. That's beautiful. I know. Uh, you know, we're not going to do merch. We're not? No. Uh -huh. But I did. I did want to let the people know, by the way. Yeah. The air conditioning is off and we are getting toasting. Are we getting real toasting? Oh, toasting. shoot. Crowd favorite catchphrase slash rejected name. You know, we landed on tangent, but I think the people really, really got attached to that. Yeah. Our fans yeah. are toasted. They're sitting at home. We, we could change it to just tangent in parentheses. Toasty. Real toasting. Real toasting. Hey, we'll, we'll see about the one year anniversary. We'll see what happens. <laughs> For example, did you ever want to go one place? When the gang wanted to go somewhere else, what did you do? Did you ever want to go one place? What did you do? For example, when the gang wanted to go somewhere else, what did you do? Turning the heat up. <laughs> we're tu we're turning the heat up. On there's the also podcast. global warming, and it's even hotter than it was before. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> that's that's kind of putting a whole bummer on the, the real toasty situation. That's what real toasty actually means. A real toasty is like our warning about about <laughs> <laughs> about rising global temperatures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's like the next like that's on NPR like real toasty. Global warming crisis at at a at its desperate ends. Your listening of NPR is drastically different because <laughs> they're not often pun or, like they don't make puns about global problems. <laughs> you know, they're not out here like uh, uh, holy hell. Uh, <laughs> What's it? What's the? What's the cathedral that burned down? <laughs> Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holy holy hell! Notre Dame Cathedral. Burns alive, you know. Like I don't. That's not the NPR I listen to. The NPR be like tragic day. You know, I re I really want the writers of the Onion day. to make an actual news website, but they use the same type of language. The Onion, the, is, the Onion is where I get my news. <laughs> I know what's happening in the world from the Onion, and right? that's exactly why you should continue listening to this podcast. Yeah, the for... most well informed reporters. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're... All right, we'll just have a moment of me laughing, and then we'll get into today's topic. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Let's pop it. Yeah. So I know last week got pretty uh, pretty heavy, talking about free will yeah. or the lack thereof. Yeah. Uh, 
And I and we missed any kind of opportunity for any kind of free willy jokes. You know, I thought about that uh, in in like making the name and everything. Yeah, but we never brought it up. <laughs> free so. Willy Five. Devs. Free. <laughs> <laughs> Devs is Free Willy. Okay, we're not going to In a sense, about... yeah. No, I could I could get into that. Maybe we can do another episode on Devs. Where we but... just compare and contrast to the film. Yeah. The, the 19, <laughs> what, 89 film Free Willy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, do you think that the creators of Free Willy were thinking about that when creating the One name? day... <laughs> The, oh, I thought you meant were they thinking about devs? No, one day someone will create a television. No, were they thinking about the the name being free will and that having anything to do with? Honestly, the theme of the here's movie. the deal. This could be a tangent in of its own, but <laughs> I think there is a discussion to be had about the themes found within the Free Willy franchise of the first three films, which I have seen numerous times because as a as a child, that was a franchise our family was. I have really only seen into. this movie once. I've seen. I don't even know if I've seen the entire thing. Oh, there's four of them. One of them has Steve Irwin. Is it the same? Is the it the same character. whale every single time? Yeah, the first three. So you mean to tell me and he then, keeps getting captured over and over again, and they? Have <laughs> have to keep freeing him? essentially yes <laughs> uh and in fact not even essentially that's that is, is it what... the same kid yeah i mean it's yeah, like home alone. That, he, he grows it's just like home alone isn't it like it's like the same guy is the same situation over Con- and over again no they they switch it up kind of each time it's like the first time it's like we have to free willie from not sea world and then the second one it's like willie tm 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 uh in the in the next episode willie is uh they're at a cove uh, they're all vacationing, and Willie the Whale shows up because they've been tracking the the orcas and their uh, little traveling area pods where they're at. They're just h- hanging out, uh, and an oil tanker crashes off the thing, and it poisons the water around it. So Free Willie is now trapped within the the oil uh, and everything, and he has. Is to- his name Free Willie? His name is Willie. <laughs> In fact, that's not his name. I is think free the, is the, free the an actual- adjective or a verb? Like, are, the, are, is it like a command, like free Willy, or is it describing Willy? That's a good question. I would say it's more of a command. It's like the, the, in this episode, yeah. we have to free Willy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think that's it every time. <laughs> the more of a chant, like yeah. free Willy. Anyhow, yeah. free Willy three <laughs> takes uh, place uh, with their poachers, and they're fighting oh. uh, poachers that are tracking down the whales and trying to kill them and eat them for meat. And it's surprisingly a nuanced take on it. Like it kind of, uh, I say surprisingly, it's not a good film, but it like is surprisingly sympathetic to the poachers, which is never something you see in these kind of com- like uh, these kind of co- conservationist films like that. By the way, the Free Willy franchise is a complete joke. The first movie was about raising enough money to actually free that whale, and then they made two more movies with that same whale. Then oh they actually gosh. freed it, and because it had lived a life of capta- captation, it died out in the wild. <laughs> so we've did Free Willy, and then Free Willy died. <laughs> and I don't think his name was Shamu, but it was like something like that. And That's Free Will cool. died with the Free Willy series. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, on a lighter note, uh, this episode's going to be a little bit more spontaneous. Yeah. Clearly. If you haven't noticed. Uh, and so we each kind of brought a different topic to the table. So and Matt. if you want to hear me talk about Free Willy, you can see me on my other podcast, Willy Time <laughs> with Jameson. You better go snag that domain as really? soon as possible. <laughs> because Willy, Willy Time with Jameson is a terrible <laughs> website. That sounds very bad. Nobody, nobody type that in ever. <laughs> nobody do that. I don't want to know if that exists out in the world. Should I? Okay, here we go. I, 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 feel, I, feel, go. I feel responsible. Max, you want to go ahead and start with your topic? Okay. Wait, so, a yeah. second, wait a second. Are you searching up? Shh. <laughs> Hear the typing of his keyboard. Oh, I want to know. Um. Well, it's a type of beer. What? Willy time? Willy time? Yeah. Okay. This is cool. Who wants to be this drinking cool. a can of Willy? <laughs> <laughs> who Sounds their, terrible. Who in their right man's like, give me a cold Willy right now? <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Drinking a Willy well, with the boys. You can look it up if you want. It's not as bad as it could have been. Yeah, got a six-pack of Willys it's in got the got some. It's got some Willie, William Defoe. William Defoe? Yeah, William Defoe. It's got some William Defoe memes and stuff. Nice. So you can look it up. Anyways, <laughs> Max, what are you talking so about? So anyway, on to the episode. So um, one, one thing I've kind of like noticed lately about uh, in terms of 
kind of how we take in entertainment. Uh, we, we mainly take it through like streaming services. Um, and I feel like obviously Netflix, N- Netflix is like kind of like the king of all of them. Yeah, but it's kind of lowering, I would say. It feels like the it feels like the landscape's kind of equalizing. Yeah, itself. it's it's definitely equalizing. Um, it used I, to be. I feel like it used to be Netflix was the only essential exactly. streaming service, and now yeah. it's, and then Hulu was just like, eh, if you got enough money. Yeah, and, and now it's like Hulu is up there, especially yeah. with the packages you can get with Disney Plus and For stuff sure. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what it's just it's like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon be mm-hmm. like beating at each other. To yeah, get that top spot yeah Yeah. for sure um however i feel like it's just kind of getting to the point like where it's just so overblown that it's the idea of streaming services is is just kind of becoming cable like yeah netflix was literally like intended to free us from cable yet here we are with like all these streaming services because you have to like go from go to one for a specific show another for another specific show so it basically just like it's getting to the point like where you have to have so many streaming services that you're paying the same amount as you would for cable. Yeah, it's almost like we, we looked to these corporate overlords <laughs> and we said, save us. And then they're yeah. like, they whispered back, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only like a quarter of the audience is going to get that joke. That's not... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Reference, it's not even a joke. <laughs> Is it clear? I got I got the joke. I yeah. didn't get the reference, so I'm not yeah, part no. of that. Oh, I, I yeah. was literally quoting <laughs> Rorschach from Watchmen. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know that Love scene that where you know, he, he's like not all really. the he's giving his like little speech at the beginning. He's like they'll all cry out and say save <laughs> us, and I whisper back no because Rorschach's like the worst human being. Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> he sucks. Um, man. Yeah. So for sure, I think. I don't know. I, I also feel like streaming services are kind of better than cable in some ways, though. No, they in, definitely are. In, in the sense that it's like, you don't have to have all of the streaming services. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, That's true. You could just have Netflix, and you you could have nothing, and you'd be happy. It's not mm-hmm. about being happy. You know what I mean? It's about yeah. having access to everything you'd want to have access to. And, like, you know. But that was kind of what cable was originally, like... You didn't have access to it immediately, but you still essentially got access to everything. Yeah, you know like, what you're, I mean? you're like, saying, like, like all, all the TV shows were on cable, so therefore you got everything. Yeah, yeah, However, and I guess not, not, not everything is on. You weren't getting stuff services. like HBO or Stars, though. Those were like those I mean, premium channels. Yeah, that you I wouldn't on. consider that cable, though. Yeah, those were yeah. those were closer to modern streaming services. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Yeah, that's um, kind of the Inception idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and then, and I mean like. It's funny because, I mean, last week we had an episode about devs, assuming that you have Hulu <laughs> or you have someone to mooch Hulu off of yeah. to where you could watch devs because it's you only have, on Hulu. Or, or, or you have cable and you caught it on FX. It's FX on Hulu. Yeah, it, it, it never aired on television. It's actually Hulu exclusive. It yeah. only ever oh, seriously? On. So I, thought, produced... I, thought, I thought the thing that they did because of that deal with yeah. Disney, I thought it was like it airs that day on... They did that, I, I, like it airs that day on FX, and then like that night it hits they, up. On they did that Google. with shows like Legion. Like Legion was like that. Yeah. But uh, Devs was FX on Hulu, so it only it did come out once a week, but it never aired on FX. Have you guys seen this great Australian show um, that FX makes called? Oh, it's like Mister. Um, it's not Mister Nobody or something like that. It's Spectre like this like, small time gangster in Australia or something like that. Nope. Oh, I'm going to find it. You guys continue talking. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, it's it's an assumption. And, and, you know, at the end of each episode, we kind of talk about these different movies and shows that you all should watch. And that kind of comes with the assumption that you have access to, most of the time, mm-hmm. like Netflix or Hulu or something like it. Yeah. Uh, because it's kind of, it kind of is expected, right? Yeah. I found the name of that show. It is Mr. In Between. It's uh, The first season of that was very enjoyable to me. What's it on? Uh, Hulu FX. There you go. Hulu. Yeah. So, um, Max, where are you going with this? Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to discuss, like, what, what do you think, like, is going to be kind of the future with this? Because I feel like streaming services, streaming services were kind of, like, meant to free us from that. But, like, they're becoming, like, their own sort of burden. Like, is there going to be, like, one ultimate streaming service that gives you all the streaming services? 
What's what's like, that? Disney's like, kind of doing that a little so. bit. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, with like, like, with like the it, ESPN, Hulu, Disney Plus deal. Yeah, I think it all it, it does come down to money, kind of like Jameson yeah, yeah. made a joke about earlier. Is like whether it be through the form of cable or through the form of streaming services, mm-hmm. you know, it, it all is about companies like us paying companies to entertain us. Yeah, because it, in in twenty twenty that often looks like these massive companies like Disney, like Amazon, yeah, that are kind of all fighting to be that top spot that, you know, maybe Disney will never own Netflix, mm-hmm. but they can try their best to own as much of the market except for Netflix. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, like, these these sites are making gangbusters, right? Like, money-wise, like, they're pulling in billions upon billions yeah. of dollars. yeah. Like so, especially in 2020 with yeah, COVID, yeah, right? And, like more people than oh, ever yeah. are yeah. at home streaming, you know, whatever. And, and that's with like schmoes like us complaining about it right now. Sure. Like, well, it's, it's becoming cable. It's like it just doesn't matter. Like you said something earlier. You said um, it's not about happiness. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make a weird claim here, and feel free to knock me down a couple pegs. But I'm gonna just go ahead and say I think it is a little bit about happiness. That's a weird thing. I but like I feel that that's I feel like that's what streaming services sell. I think I think it's, I think it's dopamine. I think it's serotonin. Yeah. I think it's this. I think it, they're selling you comfort and 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 I think that's it's weird how angry people get when they find out that something they want to watch will not be on a streaming service they have. Yeah, and I, I think mm-hmm. I I think you're right. I think that is what they're selling. Yeah. But what I was trying to say is. You don't have to have every streaming service to be happy. Yeah, you, you shouldn't. Don't, you, you don't shouldn't have to. Need that. Well, yeah. no, you don't. You don't. Like, yeah, you, you yeah, don't yeah. have to have any streaming service to be happy. You know. Yeah. But for so many of us, like that is a large way that we get entertainment, and especially yeah. for us who you know we really enjoy, you know, movies and TV shows and things yeah. like that. Like that's a big part of, um, how we spend our free time because that's just something we're passionate about. I mean, just think about how many people like identify themselves as human beings by the television show, the office for instance, yeah. or, or <laughs> even, or like the specific shows or specific albums or artists that they like, yeah. right? Like what type of media you enjoy defines who you are. And that means that you kind of have to have access to all of these, all of these different forms like all these different streaming services because then you can have access to all of those things that you can use to define yourself yeah, we talked about that in the first episode i think we did did we I yeah talk, talking remember. about being defined by what you enjoy right yeah yeah um and coming back to what you said about people being frustrated at um not having access to what they want to enjoy uh i recently heard a podcast mentioning how apple like this is indirectly related but how Apple recently pulled like tens of thousands of apps from the App Store in China, mm. um, like mainly games, and it's like that's, and it, they were talking about how you know doing business in different countries that have different forms of government can be complicated, especially because China really likes to have control over what their citizens have access to. Yeah, or there's their citizens in general. Sure. <laughs> Got him. Um, <laughs> and so, uh. but I was just thinking about that. And I was like, man, how frustrating would that be for, you know, a Chinese citizen who really was passionate about this game or this thing that they did that, like, kind of defined them, and then all of a sudden that's completely taken away, and it is way beyond their power to deal with it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um and, and that's something interesting because it's like, what if that is how I kind of felt that a little bit, uh, you know, I, I went to, um, I went to Belize a couple years ago and this was when Annihilation was rolled out on Netflix yeah. and everywhere, but the United States. Yeah. And I had it, uh, and it was available there. And yeah. so I watched it like two times while I was gone <laughs> and then I had it downloaded and then came back to the States. And then even though it was downloaded on my phone, Netflix was like, this isn't available in your country. And Mm, I was like, this is so dumb. But so I kind of felt that a little bit. But Mm -hmm. um, that idea of like that idea of like identifying so much with media that with the day where ever came where that media wasn't available and like you've lost part of your identity. That's not a place I ever want to find myself in. Like I never want to be that invested in something to where like. 
Like, I want to live a life where if Netflix and Netflix imploded in on itself tomorrow, I'd shrug it off and think, well... <laughs> like movie pass. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Throwback, oh, dude. Man. That was the best. I'm just going to say it. The best, I miss movie pass so much. The best month of my life. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Like, I... That was... And plus, high school was the best time of your life to, like... Yeah have something like that mm -hmm. because you have so much free time generally after yeah. classes and stuff I, w I wanted to add something uh in terms of like when you were mentioning like governments um kind of stopping like freedom of access to certain things yeah I, I remember when animal crossing came out uh there was like obviously like a whole bunch of news just people playing it um and i remember that was also kind of when the hong kong protests were happening yeah when it came out yeah uh and I read online that a lot of protesters were actually playing Animal Crossing um, while, the, like, while the protests were happening. However, uh, the game is actually illegal in China oh. and Hong Kong. So they would have to literally uh, like find ways to import the game from like other countries. And uh, even like Hong Kong or like just the Chinese government would try to uh, find ways to shut down Animal Crossing servers. Because apparently like they would have like literal protests on Animal Crossing servers. That's crazy. Which is epic. That, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but uh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, that's super interesting. I didn't so, know yeah, that. the government literally tried to like yeah. hold back Animal Crossing. What's his name? Jing, J Xi Jinping? Yeah, that guy is anti Tom Nook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, that, is that a Chinese guy? Yeah, that, uh, it, that is the name of Chinese man. Uh, <laughs> or their president, if you want to look at it. <laughs> That's what I, sure. I, was, I was assuming yeah. he was a Poo person Bear. of power. So, yeah, uh, that before we recorded, uh, Jameson mentioned a certain streaming service that I don't know much about. Oh, is it time for... I wanted to I wanted to add something real quick about the, the question we started this whole thing off on, and then I want to get into that. But um, I, I think you, you asked the question, where do we go from here with streaming services? Mm -hmm. and, or like, are, is it going to become like cable with all these channels? That's what it is now, is that you can it add channels. Is. There's like a billion different streaming services, and now it's all about the aggregation for you personalized based mm -hmm. on your own niche and likes. But the next leap will be something we won't see coming. It's, it's, it'll be like the yeah. same thing with what happened with Netflix, where Netflix just had the idea of like, watch whatever you want whenever you want to. That's going to be the kind of innovation that'll push us into like the next media craze. And it's, it's we won't see it coming. It'll come out of nowhere. It'll sweep over and it'll become the new norm. Mm -hmm. Just like television did, just like Netflix and streaming services are now, it'll be, uh, it'll be an evolution. Yeah. And people are trying to figure out what that evolution is now. I bet we could make an educated guess. Well, really we, think so? we certainly know how not to do it. Because <laughs> uh, I want to talk about Quibi <laughs> real quick. Quibi. Oh, oh. Oh, what's happening? Oh. Uh, Coca Cola. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm going to talk about Quibi. <laughs> Quibi was started by your friend and mine. Jeffrey Katzenberg, <laughs> um, you might know him as uh, once the head of Disney's animation department and then the founder or co-founder of DreamWorks. Jeff oh, Jeffrey Katzenberg. Yeah, yeah, he is responsible. Yeah, uh, Robin Williams would have called him Jeffrey Katzenberg because they did not like each other. <laughs> um, or at the very least, Robin Williams didn't like Jeffrey Katzenberg. I, uh, I just, so I just looked up Quibi. Yeah. And the first thing that comes up is an article from The Guardian saying, yeah. the fall of Quibi, how did it crash so fast? Well, I'll so I'm interested where this conversation is going. Let me tell you guys about a service. Have you ever thought to yourself, you're like riding to work on a train or a passenger, you have 10 free extra minutes in the day. What are you doing during that time? Me? Yeah, sure. Probably YouTube? YouTube maybe? Yeah. Yeah? Or maybe you're browsing through uh, Reddit? Or Netflix. Twitter. Not Netflix, that is. Like Twitter or something like that. Mm -hmm. But what if in that 10 minutes, you were watching a 10 minute long movie? <laughs> well, like, what if you were watching what basically is a short film that mm -hmm. they release daily, new content daily, for 10 minutes for the downtime in between when you're doing nothing else? That was what Quibi was developed for. Hmm. Was this idea that like, in the mean, and it's a dumb idea because... I don't understand how you look at the modern platform of how people consume media, which is that we binge it. 
we watch a ton of it for long periods all at once and then decide to go in the opposite direction. What it's like, what if it was like, instead of letting people watch a whole bunch of stuff all at once, which is the norm and what people love to do and they love to talk about it, what if we restricted what you could watch? <laughs> what if we made it very short? And what if we did it in a time period where you already have things you enjoy? Like, if you're not watching media right now, you're engaging with something else. Like, people like to have that chill time. Like, that time when you're not doing anything else, that's usually time you've allotted for not doing anything else. Like, that 10 minutes in between your day, the 15 minutes you're on break, that you probably don't want to be consuming media at that given mm -hmm. point in time. And they're like, in that time in which they don't want to be doing this, we're going to give them a product yeah. <laughs> that they don't see, want. See, the thing, I feel like people, like, whenever... You know, generally in those spare 10, 15 minutes, most people would probably be scrolling on Instagram or Twitter. Right, yeah. yeah. It's like a passive experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think trying to transform that into anything that's more active but just as useless will only make <laughs> you realize that you could be doing something more productive with your yeah. time. But what's crazy mm, is insightful. they threw like... You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like if I transferred that yeah. into like, oh, I'm going to watch this like semi-engaging... <laughs> movie or right. show like yeah. i'm like actually like i'd rather just not be on my phone for a second you know what yeah. i mean anyways separate thing well like they threw mm -hmm. so much money into it like here's the deal they got actual talent christoph waltz is in uh the christoph waltz anna kendrick um uh, the guy played uh, on 24 <laughs> and a bunch of other movies. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, that, like, they have name actors in yeah. these small... And Kevin other, Hart. Kevin Hart. And other celebrities, too. Right, right, right. Like, I think Chance... John Travolta. I think Chance, Chance the Rapper was... Chance was doing a punk revival. Wait. Which was has, cool. Has, has that was cool. Has Quibi had, like, advertisements on YouTube? They yeah, advertise they, everywhere. Wait, yeah. were, were, were they the ones that had, like, the Anna Kendrick one where uh, it's, like... A sex doll? Yeah, a sex yeah, doll. Yeah, that, that, that was Quibi? Yes. Yeah, that's Quibi. Yes. Oh, my and God. And then also, it's, like, the summer of 19... Like, 1986 was the hottest summer of, of all time. Like, that one <laughs> ad where all the people were at the swimming pool. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that one specifically, so that came out of left field for me. But, yeah, that's great. I, I've seen that one. Yeah, it's like, okay. The, but here's the deal. And I've even heard that some of the Quibi content is good. I've heard a lot of buzz about their adaptation of uh, Most Dangerous Game. And I've heard mm. that it's very good, actually. But here's the deal. It's shot like a movie, but it's like, what if you wanted to watch a movie, but... 10 minutes of a movie <laughs> for five days until you're done with the yeah. movie. See, yeah. it's, it's, it's really it's, interesting yeah. that, like, you know, Quibi is, seems like the kind of quintessential thing that took an idea of what should work yeah. in, in, like, modern pop culture, yeah. but just didn't. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like, on the surface, it seems like it should, like, fit into how we live our lives, mm -hmm. but it just kind of is off it's like off tune you know what i mean like it's mm -hmm. it's off key well here's the thing it's like a puzzle piece that is cut to the right design but it doesn't max match the picture of the puzzle yeah. like you here you are and you're constructing you know uh van gogh's starry night but here's just like this one red like bright neon red piece of your puzzle and it goes right in the center and it's like yeah it's cut to the right dimensions i can place it right in there and this jigsaw puzzle will be complete but why is it that color? It doesn't mm -hmm. look good there, and it makes me feel bad on the inside. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. You know. Like, I, I mean, I have, like, it's one of those things. I mean, I already have enough streaming services. Like, I've, mm -hmm. you know, I uh, snagged Disney Plus for The Mandalorian mm -hmm. and then ended my subscription, you yeah. know. And so it's like, I, I've got a couple things on there, and it's like, I was just not interested in Quibi. You know what I mean? It's like they've got a. I mean, at this point, streaming services have to have a heavy hitter. It's similar, almost. Yeah. It reminds me of uh, video game consoles. Yeah. With mm -hmm. uh, it's about the exclusives. exclusives. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Like Nintendo kills it with exclusives. Right. Yeah. They're in a totally separate realm from like PlayStation or Xbox. If they didn't have or their PC. exclusives, no one would be like, would if be buying Netflix Nintendo. Netflix didn't have stranger things no one would care about netflix <laughs> i would i would i would argue against that i think now it's different but they would not have gotten nearly as much traction as they have now if it yeah. weren't for stranger things yeah. well here's the thing they're, they came the, out of the, the gate thing, like keeping them still on the top here's the deal they came out of the gate with like four tv shows that everyone yeah. was going gaga over well, and well, then those tv shows ended it was like yeah. orange is the new black yeah. house of cards mm -hmm. 
Uh, the Crown was that one? That that's came more out, recent. That, that's more recent, recent, but like, um, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. They had the revival of Arrested Development, which yes. didn't oh, hit um, off as well, but was like a big kind and of. And yeah. they had a lot of shows that were like that had been ended, but then they picked back up True. and finished. Yeah, yeah. Like there was one. Um, there was one show that was called something simple like The Murder or something like that. It was like a very good show. The Killing? The Killing. Yeah. I remember that. That show was awesome. Um, Is that the one with the, the lady from the X-Files? Uh, maybe. How many seasons? Like two or three. Two or three. That was it. Like, or No, no, it was like four or something like that. It was this show. But yeah, I, I remember watching that show like around when I was watching Sherlock. Yeah, like this show, so. the way they did it was like it got canceled mm-hmm. and then... Netflix picked it up and finished it. Yeah. And I think that's how they, like, that's how they started with their exclusives is, like, pick up shows that have great potential but ended just because of finances or whatever. Yeah. And finish them um, and, like, let them be more edgy than they could be on television. Right. Like, this show never had any cursing. And then you immediately <laughs> knew when Netflix picked it up because there was, like, an F-bomb, like, every five minutes. They look they... at the camera and they're like, this is for you, MPA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't touch us now. <laughs> and so uh, I think that's how Netflix started it. But, yeah, Stranger Things was the first, like, totally... When, when they started to wilt, like, when those, like, flagship shows for them started yeah. to wilt mm-hmm. off and no one stopped caring, Stranger Things, that first season that came in, was just electric because it's the best... It might be like the best thing Netflix has actually ever produced, and I don't think they've ever reached that high ever again. <laughs> it's, I mean, I mean, I, I, I dearly love some of the movies Netflix has made, but none of those make any kind of big splash because no one is talking about films like I don't feel at home at this world in this world anymore. A movie I love, yeah. But like, who here at this table has seen that? It's on my queue. Yeah, I know it's on your queue next. <laughs> yeah, I told you. And, and I mean, <laughs> like a lot of the things that we've talked about in like. The recommendations here, or a couple of them, have been mm-hmm. Netflix originals, like yeah. Midnight Gospel was, mm-hmm. and Mine Today is going to be. But it's like, yeah, like Stranger Things, especially season one, just hit this chord. I think also, it hit this chord that was like, people were itching for the 80s again for yeah, some they reason. Were. Drive, yeah, they Drive came out, and that Ready soundtrack Player, got us kind of like bopping, and yeah. we were like, ooh, synth yeah. wave. What's, and then Ready Player, Ready Player One was getting written around the same <laughs> mm-hmm. time yeah. by Ernest Klein, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, and we had the adaptation of It Chapter One yeah, that like, was coming out. Like, there was just this like cultural like revival a little bit of the 80s. Yeah. And like Stranger the, Things, I would say, if it didn't catch on to that, it may have even been the beginning of that revival. Like I don't know. I feel like we were. I feel like we were. I feel like we were kind of vibing on the aesthetic of it for a while, and then the Duffer Brothers came along, and they were like feeling that vibe back when it was like not exactly mainstream, and then they just brought that vibe to the mainstream. Yeah. Again, along with Dungeons and Dragons, I'm just saying, Stranger Things has to be one of the main reasons that that game is reviving. True. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for real. That first season, oh my goodness, that first season of Stranger Things. The other ones since then have been good, but that first season is untouchable. I wish, it's mean, but I wish there wasn't a season two or three. It's just so very... Because that that first season's perfection, actually. It sucks to say that, but like, and that might be the thing, is I don't think they can ever reach those heights again. Because I think like, because it's such a complete, solid story yeah just one thing leads to another and just like but, so on yeah so but on. also like emotionally mm-hmm. those characters don't really have anywhere to go after that like hopper they, it, they could hopper, just end it there and it would be it would be hopper, fine you're saying hopper, yeah. hopper gets over the death of his kid uh she, you know the will's mom goes through hell and back to literally to get <laughs> him and and bring her family together closer than they ever were before you know um mike learns compassion and friendship with uh someone uh, odd and strange and he finds that in 11 11 finds love for the first time and an emotional attachment to people and then she learns how to be more human even though she's not been treated that way you know it's and uh um will's brother his story is great in there uh yeah. nancy and steve like their whole arc, like it, it like Steve's tr- transition from bully to good guy. Yeah. Nancy finding her own inner strength and her own ability to like be it's her like own everyone's, person. Everyone's everyone's got a complete arc. Yeah. So that means at the start of the next season, like you have to throw a monkey wrench into these people that are somewhat whole now. 
Yeah. Like, the best thing about season two was exploring what the psychologically that did to Will, but then they just, they didn't really fix Will. They just, yeah. like, Will, like, got worse and worse I also feel like they just didn't worse. really explore it that well. They, yeah, they, like, they, because... It was just kind of like, you knew it was there, but they didn't really talk about it. The statement, it, the, the season two is not about Will getting over that. Mm-hmm. It's about Will not getting over it. And in mm-hmm. fact, like, him, like, basically being controlled by it. And they mm-hmm. could, you could do something with that. Yeah. I just don't feel like they did well enough. I mean, there's, there's a, like, I guess there's the whole, like, the family gathers around him and shows how much they love him. They play the music. And that, I think that's a kind of a good thing. Like, you know, somebody who is going through something rough like that. But, like, and then Stranger Things season three... I don't know. You, you they did some good stuff in season two. Hopper uh, and Eleven's relationship, that's good because that's kind of, that, that that could be seen as natural continuation because Hopper lost his daughter and now he has a surrogate one in Eleven. He's teaching himself how to be a father again. Yeah. But again, they don't go anywhere with it. They they follow the same beats as before. And then season three, there is no through line to season three as like thematically. Like, there's no thematic statement to season three other than the Russians are here. And Man, we're really ragging on this show, folks. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is I'm sorry. I keep... I'm sorry. It's fine. I, I'm ranting. So, circ- uh, circling back. <laughs> circling back to what Max's point was. Yeah. Thinking about the future of mm-hmm. streaming services, I'm thinking of, like... And I want to kind of move on from this topic mm-hmm. pretty quick. But, um, so, we know that... I mean, HBO just launched, like... HBO Max. HBO Max, which is their, like, premium, premium, I guess, streaming service. I want to, I want to talk about Peacock. I was actually just going to say Peacock. I'm Peacock intrigues me. I have a Peacock Pe- account, and I well, like Well, I mean, it. it's free. Yeah, yeah, it's free. Well, <laughs> so, except it's not. It, if oh, you want not? to watch some content, it is... And, and pay for it. I mean, oh. they have a baseline free with some good shows in it. I'm currently which, watching... Which has ads, I'm assuming? Yeah, and I'm currently okay. watching Battlestar Galactica on it. Okay. And by the way, Battlestar Galactica, uh, pretty darn good. I've never the actually show? watched it. Is, I it, watched is this, it sci-fi? Yes, I watched the 70s Battlestar Galactica. Dude, I mean, I... Back when I was a kid, it used to be, I watched the reruns of it. That I'm, was my frame yeah. work for one of Battlestar Galactica. I'm runs. a big fan of Star Trek, especially The Next Generation. Literally next to Max right now is a Next Generation calendar. <laughs> um... And, like, that's been there all year. It's great. Uh, so I love TNG. Uh, and I think sci-fi is, like, such a great genre yeah. in general. So, But I've never seen Battlestar Galactica. I love the old Battlestar Galactica, as cheesy as it is. This new Battlestar Galactica, great characters, grounded. I say new. It's, like, over a decade old. <laughs> I'm late to this yeah. party to a degree that is shameful. But now that I'm at the party, I will party. I'll put on <laughs> one of those pointy hats and, uh, like, the kazoo with the tape on the end of it. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to go to town. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so Peacock has potential. I think they've also gotten, like, they're going to get The Office, right, which is a big deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I, I assume that with The Office, I mean, they're a CBS thing, right? NBC. So, NBC, sorry. Yeah. So they're probably going to get Parks and Rec, which is mm-hmm. also it's a already show, on there. Which is already yeah. it's their show, and then Community, I think, is also their show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but also you NBC is like defined a decade. Yeah, and Not, so they've so, defined multiple decades because you're yeah. also talking Cheers, Frasier, like NBC back in the day. The the Peacock yeah. was where Seinfeld, right? Or am I crazy? Was that not Seinfeld? I have no idea. I, I can look it up. It might not be Seinfeld, but like there was a time frame there where like. NBC was like where you went. Thirty Rock, Thirty Rocks, NBC. Yeah. Like, like. This is a TBS. No, oh, well, that's where it's right now. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where Seinfeld Network? originally aired. On what channel? Um, I'll look into it. You guys can. Keep okay. It. Yeah, but like, NBC is kind of where comedy was king for a while. It says TBS and NBC. Yeah, NBC. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See, Seinfeld. Like, I- I'm saying like. Yeah, no, no one's so, created comedy it, shows like NBC has yeah, for a while. Yeah. And I, I think you know, as far as the future of streaming services, I think this is the new norm for now. Norm, mm-hmm. but That's a Cheers reference for you. <laughs> but I think no. that it'll just get more and more competitive to where people will feel like they have to get more things. I think Peacock is going to be a huge competitor because yeah. of you know it'll take time for them to get all of their assets back. And they from need Netflix. their they need their Stranger mm-hmm. Things. And I think yeah, but. But, you know, people, I mean, like, the most watched things on Netflix are those old shows like Friends and The Office and things like that. Like, those are the things that get people on the platform. And so... And also shows that they've canceled. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, 
I think that, you know, Netflix has a strong... Maybe Netflix is the Nintendo, but I think other people have room in the space, you know? Maybe Netflix... Yeah. Like, just like PlayStation and Xbox can never quite get into Nintendo's space, mm -hmm. they can create masterpieces on their own, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and in the same way, like, I mean, comparing to consoles, it's like... You can't, like, if you have a Nintendo Switch, it's nothing like having a PlayStation. Mm -hmm. um, but having a PlayStation and Xbox feels redundant. Right. You know what I mean? So I think streaming services will kind of uh, manifest in similar comparisons. You and, know what I mean? And I'm, like I said, I still think that what in, a, in another decade, I think we will consume media in a completely different way than we do now. I feel like, because that's it, that's the way yeah. it is. Yeah, I mean, that's innovation. Yeah. Like, it'll, it'll happen. Like, we're, we're talking about streaming services now, and we're gonna, we're, we're thinking this is great and innovative and crazy, but, like, mm -hmm. some guy in a dorm room somewhere is ha having the first cradling of an idea in his brain that's gonna turn into how we all mass consume media. Mm -hmm. Like, and that person is gonna change the world for better or for worse, and that is neat. Mm-hmm. Break time, it's break time. Off the piece of that. Da, 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 da. I won't say Kit Kat da, da. bar because I feel like that's copyright. What did you do? Did you ever want to go one place? All right, well, Don't welcome. break me off a piece <laughs> of any kind of uh, cat kit bar. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, welcome to the heads. podcast recommends. Um... Yeah. You know, we're we're here to bring you some more of that juicy media for you to consume. We got yeah. that media juice. That's right. Uh, I'm gonna media start out this week. Media. We are I'm porn, gonna start out this week. Porn I. I I'm what? <laughs> I said we're pouring a cup of that juice. Okay, I thought I heard something else <laughs> in that. I know. I kind of want to know what you heard. Never now. mind. I we talked about <laughs> we talked about binging this week, and I definitely binged the show the past yeah, the past week. Um, this show is called Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts. I forced you all to sit down and watch the first, like, three minutes of the show mm -hmm. because it is a great, like, depiction of the vibe of the whole thing. I know neither of you have seen the show, mm -hmm. but, man, the show is so freaking good. So, it's a Netflix exclusive. We're talking about streaming services today, so... Um, it's on there. Way to be on brand. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's, it's a DreamWorks animation thing, so... Oh, so Jeffrey Katzenberg exactly. is, is tied in. We're, we're bringing all of Except it together. He's no longer Damn. at DreamWorks, so... So I guess it's a good thing, because without him, they made this, which is <laughs> one yeah. of my... Like, this show, it just, like, hit a chord with me that's just, like, so freaking good. I, um... So, at some point in the future, we're going to also talk about um, The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, which is a video game, and it's obvious. It's very dark. It's post-apocalyptic. Oh, it's a video game. Yeah, I bought the novelization, guys. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> um, well, I'm interested to see how that goes. <laughs> um, so that would be and, hilarious. You know, that, that's a very, that's a very, that's a very. <laughs> so, I was just thinking about like next episode. Like, what if you guys both talked about the video game, but I talked. I was like breaking down the pros and like <laughs> of like a novelization of The Last of Us Two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, and so you know, there there's obviously merit in stories that are dark, and stories that are very solemn. But there's also something. Somber. S sure. Sorry. There's Is also psalm a word. Or solemn. Or? Solemn. I thought you just said psalm. Psalm. <laughs> in, in media, that is psalm. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I think there's something very special about media that is hopeful. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that that is often found in children's shows. But I think obviously children's shows sometimes can be very cheesy and very on the surface. But whenever a kids show really gets it right, there's something that is timeless about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this show is one of those. And. One show that I would relate it to, which is a show I've talked about on this podcast, I think, maybe, is Avatar The Last Airbender, which I recently rewatched because it's now on Netflix. Right. And that show is just so incredible because it, you know, uh, they're, they're both related, this show and that show, in a lot of ways. They're both about 
um, one kid who is special in some way, uh, and they are thrown into a world that they are unfamiliar with that is kind of, in Avatar, he's kind of thrown into a world that is actually in this war that he was unaware of. In Kipo, she is, uh, you know, lives underground and she's thrown onto the surface, which is like infested with mutant animals and humans who are only trying to survive. Uh, but both of the protagonists are overly optimistic and hopeful and they want the best and they, they look for the best in people even when it makes no sense. And both of them are... Kind of reminds me of like Hayao Miyazaki films a little bit. Sure, yeah. Yeah. And so... They have that optimism to them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, both of, both of the protagonists in these shows, like, the thing that makes them special is supposed to unite the world in some way and change the world for the better. And that gives them both um, this sense of optimism right and, and uh you know i brought up the last of us and i saw i saw this youtube video comparing kipo with the last of us as far as really? you know spoilers for the last of us part one <laughs> but it follows ellie who is immune to the disease right um, and she has this genetic mutation which in some ways could bring hope to the world right mm -hmm. but in the last of us it only makes it more dark because you that know hope has been taken away exactly but these shows kind of, you know, they hold on to that hope and they emphasize that hope. Yeah. And they're both, you know, Kipo especially is very post-apocalyptic, but it's hold on, holding on to this hope. And it is saying that, like, there is, um, even when things are at their darkest, there's still value in looking for the best in people. You know what I mean? Th there's this concept... So there's a couple different concepts in like storytelling. Like one is like the the deconstruction, and a lot of times like people will they'll, de they'll deconstruct the tropes of a genre. Like uh, Watchmen is a deconstruction of superhero media. Yeah, it is about and and it and it's a very um, depressing deconstruction. Sure. In a sense, it is about deconstructing it, and there's there's not a lot of hope in Watchmen, and what is there is, is superficial is, is dim. And that's I mean yeah. like the only hope in Watchmen is superficial, and that's the point. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. But there's also a different type of deconstruction. It's not even necessarily called deconstruction. I can't think of the term for this, but it's where you, you play around with the tropes, but and, and sometimes it can, like, reinforce them, in a sense. Like, uh, like, you could write a story in which, like, you tear apart this idea. Like, say you wanted to tear apart Superman as a character. You could put him in this, like incredibly dour grim movie like man of steel like something like that where there's just death and destruction but then like you find a way through that grimness to like reinstate what the core values of superman is if man of steel had ended with him like saving the day against all odds maybe it's realistic and and, and everything but like what if it was actually hopeful rather than just kind of name dropping the word hope into it that'd be like deconstruction that leads to a reinforcement of yeah more positive things like th there's this idea of deconstruction only being for the purpose of making something uh i, I, th I feel like there's a cynical nature to a lot of deconstruction yeah. and and i think where that... like stuff like kippo would kind of deconstruct but then reinforce and i think the 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 thing that is different about it is often in quote-unquote adult shows yeah. they are down to earth and realistic mm -hmm. whereas in kids shows they're often trying to get to the core of it and more it's more about the idea of things yeah. and less about the reality of things mm -hmm. even though they can be realistic in in some ways as far as the way that people interact with each other right. and things like that and the relationships that can be really hard between friends or between parents and children and things like that those conflicts are very real but often you know especially in context of Kipo, you know, it really, you know, it, it does hone in on the the ideas and the concepts that are important, um, and in, and enforces like you know, it encourages a, uh, optimism in dark moments, which I think, especially now, is really really helpful and really cool and refreshing. Yeah. Whenever you know, like everything on our phone is political and hate speech mm -hmm. and
toxic. You know what I mean? It's just like so refreshing. Honestly, it just kind of feels magical in a way. Yeah, like, like, like it literally like, does. Like yeah. hope, nowadays, whenever to, I find like, like it's hard media, to describe, but it's like it literally feels magical. Genuinely, hopeful media is mm-hmm. such a rarity nowadays that mm-hmm. when I find it, it's like crack. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like it's like oh, thank you, you're doing the thing that mm-hmm. makes me feel good on the inside. And, and that's that's what I was telling yeah. them. Like after I finished the last episode of this, I mean, there's two seasons. They're coming out with another one, but. After I finished the last episode of this, I immediately started the first episode again because I was like, this is like, it is so satisfying to find something that is not honed in on negativity. Um, so, yeah. And that, that's kind of what I was trying to say earlier. Like, there's this there's this idea in storytelling where, like, the more upsetting something is, the more real it is to life. Like, I, I feel like we put these blinders on in media all the time where we see stuff like The Last of Us Part 2 or something like that that is gritty and grim and realistic. And we say, this grimness is realistic. This this mm-hmm. upsetting nature to this art is what makes this real. But here's the thing. Emotions such as joy, hope, they're just as real mm-hmm. as those negative emotions kind of like what people are saying about like how they only want like gritty superhero movies yeah they they they, they've put more weight into Mm -hmm. the the quote-unquote grittiness Mm -hmm. uh we've we've said that this is more impactful than other ideas when i can't don't think that's further from the truth i think both have their place in media but i feel like one does not outweigh the other like joy and and hopefulness those are such they are real qualities. They are real human emotions we feel. That's why I'm always upset that like good comedies never get the kind of accolades you feel like they should mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Because we, we, we give too much weight to negative emotion and not enough to positive. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So that's Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts. Big fan. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm actually, you convinced me I'm, I'm going to. I mean, I just, love any, I just love anything animation, so I'm definitely watching it. Yeah, yeah for sure. All right. It's weird that you're talking about childhood and darkness and everything because uh, my recommendation is about all those things. And uh, I will say this is not necessarily a feel-good book. I wouldn't call it a feel-bad book. It is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by legendary writer Neil Gaiman. Uh, whose work I've been getting a lot into, uh, getting a lot more into recently because I'm going through his entire run on his creation. Uh, Sandman, which was a, a DC Comics character back in the day, that's just very trippy. But he he really elevates the comic book format to a literary art with the Sandman series. And then he goes and he writes books, uh, which are literary, and they are. He's just a really good author, uh, from what I've read of him so far, and I really appreciate his work. And the Ocean at the End of the Lane. Um, I read this right after Breakfast of Champions. My other. Uh, the book that yeah, I yeah. recommended and they were such a, a weird one, two punch for me when it mm. came to uh, the books because they're such different in tones. Uh, you know, um, breakfast of champions is chaos and the ocean at the end of the lane is subtlety and it is slow moving and it is character driven and it is emotion filled and it is sad. It, it is a story about a man and there's some minor spoilers in this, a man remembering his childhood and then remembering his childhood as magical and the if he returns home and suddenly he sees that oh my goodness there was all this magic around me when i was a kid and some of it's very threatening and some of it's scary and you could probably read into that as metaphors of like you know childhood trauma and stuff like that but like there's so much that of the this fantasy world and sometimes it's beautiful and wonderful and uh, and it's this this balance between these two warring fantasy elements of this kid's uh childhood so that's interesting is it kind of like a hyperbolization of the effect of nostalgia like creating like us fantasizing the past i i'm not exactly sure uh, because the book is very literal about its fantasy elements like the the end of the book all but like tells you yes that's exactly what happened Hmm. uh and it's it's a sad book because you realize that because it's about the death of childhood. It's about this kid coming into contact with something and it they're just there being the before time and the after time. And it's it's somber because you realize that when I read this book, I began to think about how I had all these memories from childhood that are gone forever now. Like I can't even tell you like 
all the things I did last month. <laughs> but like, there's so many memories of me growing up that are just gone forever. And there's this magic to childhood that's that's gone forever and how we view the world. And I would say that's probably more than anything what the book is about. It's about that kind of, that ending to that. that. And it's very emotional and sad. And it is a book steeped in nostalgia, but it's also a very beautiful book. It's so well-crafted and written and the characters are so good and and sometimes you just feel bad for like the cruel the cruelty of this world to this young kid who didn't mean to do anything but he finds himself in this outlandish situation in which he's being hurt but then also there are good characters that help him and there's so much magic to the world around him and there's so much magic to this book but it is it is a it can be a joyous happy funny book and it can be a weird dark and scary book sometimes gross out uh but it's all these things and it's very beautiful and it's very touching and i loved it very dearly and it meant a lot to me reading it and i think about it all the time and uh it's it's what made me want to dive even deeper into neil gaiman as an author because i always knew that he was good because i had checked out some of his other books uh but like this one for me is is special and uh, i can't recommend it enough so that's The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. If you can, find a copy, uh, a copy of the, there's a paperback copy with a uh, cover illustration by renowned artist Robert McGinnis. I believe he used to do movie, movie posters for the old 007 series. If you can take Heck a look yeah. at how, how just beautiful this front cover is. Cool. I know this is like mm -hmm. a judging a book by its cover thing, but this is better than mm -hmm. any other cover for this book that I've ever seen. And like, I, I think it's yeah. wonderful. The, the prose of this book, his description of the fantasy elements and the crazy... Do you have a specific part you would want to read? No, I, I really want people to experience it. Especially like the more magical elements of it are just so good. And mm. uh, I just, I can't recommend this book enough. It's dark, it's sad, it's beautiful, and I love it dearly. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, my, my personal recommendation, uh, changing from what I originally stated... Um, I'm going to go with I Am Not Okay With This, which is a, another Netflix original series. Oh, that's got the, the, the chick from uh, It Chapter 1, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and also it's produced by the same people that did uh, another one of my favorite TV shows on Netflix, uh, End of the Effing World, world. Uh, and oh, Stranger dear. Things. A profanity. <laughs> yes, and Stranger Things, which we discussed in depth. Yeah. Um, it is part of that... Uh, that oncoming trope of sci-fi fantasy content on streaming services of girl with telepathic powers, right? <laughs> but it, yeah. I, I feel like with a lot of the other ones, I feel like it's much more about the powers, but this one, it's much more about the human inside. Right. And it's about the person that's trying to, uh, like, grow up and, like, come up with these... Well, 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 this person's, like, also dealing with, like, all these, like, new social constructs that they've never been a part of or like experienced before at the same time they're like oh you also have these powers and you can literally kill people Ugh. <laughs> uh and also your dad's dead uh and it, it's, it's just like but at the same time like g going back to like what we were talking about before this is like one of the most hopeful shows i've seen in a while mm. um something about this show just kind of struck a chord with me and i don't really know what it was and it's also just very very short and bingeable which yeah. is which is nice i remember i just wanted to like sit down one night and watch one episode and go to bed yeah and then i just like i see that it's got those like 20 to 30 minute episodes yeah I, I just things... I, I i watched the whole thing in that's how they get you is that you think like yeah. you think you've not spent any time at all but you've like mm -hmm. watched the equivalent of three movies yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> those those short like semi bite-sized episodes just yeah freaking get you so good guys yeah. what if we created a streaming service that was 10 minute long <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no wait a second <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah it, I feel like just something about the way that they wrote the characters in this uh, show was just really, really interesting and uh, very well developed. Is this also based off a graphic novel? Because it I is know... actually okay. I was about to say I know it the is actually, the... uh, and yeah. I really, I really love the art that they did in the graphic novel uh, as well. It's like very, very cartoony. But at the same time, it's like dealing with like such heavy subjects. Kind of like you got that like Dude, I Scott found, Pilgrim. I'm aesthetic. pretty sure way way less way more minimalistic and cartoony. I found that there is a whole genre of graphic novels that are mm -hmm. super minimalist and like 
very much like that, like yeah. very down to earth, like yeah. really interesting oh, that I've wanted to dig into. The second you dip your toes out of mainstream comic comics, like once you once you're outside of like Marvel and DC or anything like that, there's this world of people making like slice of life graphic novels, like Ghost mm-hmm. World, for instance, and just yeah. stuff like that, where like there are people telling very interesting stories in that medium and they're flourishing and it's, it's beautiful and the art is beautiful and it's, it's yeah. passionate people. Oh, that's oh cool. wow. That's so cool. That's very yeah. cool. That that's the exact style of the old, um, Popeye, like, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is. yeah. Bit. I used to yeah. read those comic strips. I, Which, I had a big compendium, compendium of them. Some of them are racist. I, but <laughs> anyway, don't look at the past media folks. It's rough. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Kipo and the age of the wonder beast is also, I think based on a, series of comics which i think they were only published on the internet and now they're gone maybe netflix bought the rights to them or something and then took them down was it like a web comic yeah that's interesting good for that person i bet they made bank on that probably yeah i hope so yeah i mean i guess dreamworks probably bought it from them but yeah i hope i'm sure that they yeah got compensated well yeah you hope hope. because like you never know because dude i mean we're talking about the place that was started by Jeffrey Katzen. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The characters in that are just so good, and I'm I'm not gonna dip back into it. It's good. You guys should. I, I feel like all of our recommendations this week are pretty pretty fire. So. Pretty yeah. Pretty fire recommendations. Um, Check them out. Yeah. That's you know awesome. what else is a fire recommendation? <laughs> merchandise <laughs> oh, no, no. bringing it back. You know, uh, we are not going to sell merch to you yet. I feel like we could dive headfirst into the ocean of merch and I would be happy. I want to drown in merch. If any companies are out there listening right now, we're trying to sell out. Your ad could be here. Can you hear this? (laughs) This could be (laughs) your product placement. Here, let me give you a little test uh, real quick. Boy, do I love your product. (laughs) It's, I use your product every single day. I use it in the bathroom, on the bus, in my car, any kind of transportation, that's where I'm using your product, <laughs> you know. And your product could be sold here by me and by us. That's we, good. I want to sell things. Wow, your product sounds really amazing. You know, if if you, if you the listener, want to hear those delicious ads at the end of the program... We want to commoditize this. <laughs> we would love for you to rate and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts and, you know... Post, uh, post one of our posts on your story. Send get, us money on Venmo. <laughs> get, get, the, get the word out. Um, things like that. It, they, Share they, it with your friends. They, they mean can. a lot. Uh, we've we've gotten a lot of comments, and they're all very kind, and we yeah. appreciate them all. Yeah. Open your hearts. Open your wallets. <laughs> yeah, if, if you, if, Honest, if honestly, at this point, we're just waiting for negative comments. In fact, you know what? <laughs> next next episode, whoever has the most negative comments. <laughs> We're featuring it on it's, the episode. It's funny that we have an episode that talks halfway about positivity and then we encourage negativity <laughs> to end. It's not even the worst part because our last episode, or two episodes ago, was like, what, us talking about internet? Discourse? <laughs> yeah, that's good. About um, comments. So. Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, I was lying. If you post a mean thing, we're, we're not going to feature you. That was in not. jest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. bring it back. That's bring right. Bring it back. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's going to do it this week on Tangent. Man, thank you all for listening along. And wow, we're at like basically an hour. So, man, you really you really made the trek this week. So we appreciate it as always. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Guys, I think the merch was inside of us all along. <laughs> the merch is inside of you. <laughs> You just got to really it's, look for it. It's your intestine <laughs> on the black market. Did you ever want to go one place? What did you do? For example, the gang wanted to go somewhere else. What did you do?